In the mid-afternoon hours of May 14th of 2023, a magnitude 4.7 earthquake struck a section of the ocean northwest of Hachijojima Island. Yet, an hour later, a magnitude 5.5 quake hit the same area. And then, 10 minutes later, a magnitude 5.8 quake. Within the next 8 hours, a total of 11 earthquakes would occur, 7 of which were in the magnitude 5 range, and 4 of which were in the magnitude 4 range. Many of these quakes were felt across sections of the Japanese mainland, causing minor shaking but no true damage there. Because of the location of these quakes, some people thought that they were volcanic in origin. And to this I say, you might be correct. Typical tectonic quake sequences follow a 1 over x integral pattern in terms of the number of aftershocks which occur, such as seen in this example of the earthquake storm which occurred at the Salton Buttes volcano in California on April 30th, 2023. As you can see, the integral 1 over x function is a pretty good match to the actual total. Yet, the series of earthquakes which occurred northwest of Hachijojima do not fit such a pattern, suggesting that they are not tectonic. Rather, in my opinion, I think that they are volcanic in origin, possibly being triggered by the movement of magma, as no other explanation is a better fit for the available data. The closest known volcano to the series of events which just occurred is the little-known and little-studied Kuro's Hole Volcano. Kuro's Hole is a purely submarine volcano that measures 14 kilometers wide and comes within 110 meters of the ocean's surface. It does not have a single known eruption in recorded history, but a recent study of this volcano notes that its most prominent feature, that is, a 6.9 km wide caldera, looks somewhat recent and has rhyolitic pumice on its walls. This thick unit suggests that it originated in a powerful explosive eruption, which I estimate ejected around 36.35 cubic kilometers of tephra when it erupted, probably a minimum of 8,000 years ago. Yet, these quakes are centered 32 kilometers west of the Kuros Hole, and when I checked from a satellite, I did not see any volcanic plumes or discolored water, which would imply that a volcanic eruption occurred. And when you look at the last 52 years of magnitude 2.5 or higher earthquakes recorded in the region, while almost the entirety of the seafloor and regional islands have seen at least one earthquake, there is a mysterious dead zone around the Kuros Hole, suggesting that it might not be active after all. Possibility too is that these quakes are related to a submarine flink eruption far away from one of two regional volcanoes. Such a scenario occurred in 2000 at the Miyake-jima volcano where large volumes of magma seemingly drained into a several dozen kilometer long fissure either on or beneath the ocean floor to the west, causing a section of the overlying mountain on the island to collapse into a 1.6 kilometer wide caldera. Some other regional volcanic islands also have ridges to the west of the main volcanic cone, suggesting that such fissure flank eruptions are not exclusive to Miyake Jima. Yet, I also do not think this is what is going on, as if this were to be occurring, you would expect earthquakes to start underneath the volcano center and then migrate along a fairly straight line to the eventual eruption site, but this has not happened. Instead, I suspect that an intrusion of magma is occurring underneath a section of the ocean floor, perhaps being associated with a previously unknown volcano. While Kuro's Hole has a prominent caldera that helped it receive its name, it also seemingly occurs alongside three other calderas to the south and southwest. And, although seafloor resolution is very low, so we could be making something out of nothing, it appears that there might be a fifth, even larger caldera beneath where six of the seven magnitude 5 quakes occurred. In the last 51 years, a definite cluster of earthquakes has occurred around this possible fifth caldera at the same site as the current earthquake swarm, including eight prior earthquake swarms. All of these occurred at fairly similar depths in the vicinity and occurred with similar magnitude, suggesting a similar origin. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank this channel's patrons on Patreon and channel members on YouTube.